Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry 2. Last time, we got a real good glimpse of the game's true nature, which is a oil drum full of boiling dog vomit. Mission 7's not gonna improve much. A meeting of power shall end in conflict. I like the real artistic way that the uh, cutscene transitions into gameplay by just kind of stalling. In a way that makes you think that, oh hey, maybe the game crashed. But it didn't. It just kind of paused the cutscene, give you a nice little free artistic freeze frame of nothing, and then we're back into gameplay. Ah, oh, we're in the factory, mission seven, the Ouroboro City. Oil factory? Not entirely clear where we are. I do know this dopey ass place is called Ouroboros City. And I guess our Arius Heihachi wannabe is uh an oil conglomerate working with again, a yet unknown demonic entity. Oh boy, what have I gotten myself into with this playthrough? Um there's going to be a lot of stalling in this mission. I remember this one pretty well. Uh, this is... As much as I hate the three infested tank infested chopper mission that we just got done, uh, I think I hate this one a lot more. Because this one... There are... Um, I'm going to say there are four elevator sections. I might be wrong about that. We'll see. But I'm pretty sure it's like four. It's three or four. Um, a lot of you might be wondering, Dave, why are you LPing a game that you so clearly hate? I don't do this often. I don't LP games I really hate often. But I'm planning on doing all the Devil May Cries. Eventually, I would like to do all character action games, period. Um, just as like a, a good retrospective on how that genre is evolved. By the way, that's a new enemy. It's a bomb. And I kind of underestimated its explosion radius. Um, but I think that when you explore a series, um, it's important to not only see the good of the series, but also to see how how far awry, how far afield that that series can go. Uh, Devil May Cry is a wonderful... Uh, understandably celebrated series full of four fantastic games. It's a five game series. It's important when examining Devil May Cry and all of the the beloved greatness that it, it impresses upon its fans that you also look at Devil May Cry 2 and understand why this game is such a black sheep. I think it's it's very important to have that perspective sometimes. I try not to fill the channel up with games that I hate, uh, because that's kind of miserable and tired, and it, it gets really tedious. But you just have to understand the good to appreciate the bad sometimes. Um, it's why I it, it also helps with your critical perspective. I find it's why you should never avoid bad games, so long as it's not going to break your bank. I mean, obviously, just pro-consumer side of things, you don't want to go and drop $60 on a, a shitty game, shitty game, knowingly, but you need to play bad games every now and then to appreciate how good the good ones are. Um, by the way, I've kind of just been talking over this. I've now found two hidden objects in the environment. One of them was a piece of the amulet. It was the fire heart. The other one, or, uh, yeah, it was a fire heart, uh, which just replaces the electro heart in the amulet instead of, uh, electric based attacks in devil trigger. We'll now get fire ones. 
Uh, and as we jump down into this room that was concealed by the lava pit in the middle of the, the uh, factory, we also pick up Vendetta, which is a new sword. Um, the moveset isn't wildly different. The range is a bit shorter than Rebellion. Its damage is substantially higher than Rebellion's. So I'll probably be sticking with Vendetta from here on out. Especially because it's pretty cheap to upgrade. I think, actually, I think it's the same cost as, uh, Rebellion. I'm not sure, though. Uh, but now that I have the bats cleared out, I can probably get the first level of upgrade for it. Get it up to level 2. And that's only, yeah, it's, uh, it's the same price as Rebellion. So once I get another 10,000, I can, uh, get Vendetta up. And you'll begin to see the difference between it and Rebellion pretty soon. Uh, because we have boss fights coming up. And I went the wrong way. Uh, mercifully, we have not come to one of the elevator sections yet, though. Although we have gone, you know, four or five rooms without really having to fight any enemies. Not that that would be terribly welcome. Because all we're getting now is, uh, Puyas and Finish Demons, which... We've encountered plenty of those throughout the game. Um, you'll find that Devil May Cry 2 just as variations of the enemies that it introduces to you very early in the game. And here's our first elevator section. There's always going to be elevator sections, no matter what kind of beat-em-up, hack-and-slash, character action game. Uh, no matter what you're playing in any of these genres or subgenres, there's always going to be the elevator sections. Usually, what they'll try to do to make them more interesting is throw enemies at you. In Devil May Cry 2, they'll feel compelled to do that, actually. There were a couple birds. We shot them. Bats. But we just have a, a really long, boring elevator ride with nothing. There's some stuff. There are some blood goats that spawn down at the bottom. They can't make it here. They can't make it to the elevator. We have to reach the bottom first. We Shoot that blood goat. Shoot that blood goat. Oh, I love the shotgun. I like the shotgun in Devil May Cry 1 better. Because you can um, you can do that shotgun twitch trick with it to fire faster. Although, to be fair, I think the Devil May Cry 2 shotgun, it feels like it fires just a hair faster than the base fire rate of the uh, Devil May Cry 1 shoddy. Not sure if that's just... Apophenia or what. <gasps> uh, this is a nice room. Because there are shitloads of breakables in here. Along with a variant of... Mishras and Finnish Demons to kill. I like these Finnish Demons a little bit. Even the base ones. Um, that design of having their entire bodies caged up is really neat. I like their design more than that. Their visual design more than, uh, the mannequins from DMC1. Although I like fighting the mannequins from DMC1 a little bit more. I don't know, I go back and forth. I mean, they're just standard cannon fodder. I'm not sure. Uh, so if you haven't been able to tell, this is actually just another elevator room. Uh, it's disguised kind of well. It's a tram. Uh, this one's actually filled with stuff, which is fine. Ah, I dropped my combo. Only got an A. I don't think I killed that much while I had the A ranking. <laughs> so, now it's probably a good time to explain for those new to the series, new to the genre. The upper right below my red orbs, that's the uh, style ranking. It goes from D to S, D being the lowest, S being the highest. The idea is to reward your combo variety and your aggression. Now, ideally, you would want to really mix your combos up and attack relentlessly to build that up and keep it in an S. And all the enemies are already exhausted. They don't spawn new ones in while this tram ride is in effect. Uh, the higher your rank when something dies, the more red orbs they shower you with. I think I've said that before. If you take a hit or let it drop due to not sustaining hits on an enemy, uh, your combo will reset down to uh, D or pre uh, D ranking. Uh, and it's the same thing that plays a big role in determining your uh, rank at the end of the mission, which again rewards bonus orbs for higher ranks. <laughs> it's a little. Oh, by the way, third elevator section <laughs> uh, in a row. 
Uh, it's a little busted in this game. It's not too busted compared to the way some of the other things in the game are busted. Uh, but some of the ways they changed certain mechanics makes it a little bit tedious to keep up. And also because there's just not that much variety in combos anymore. Uh, there's also no taunt in DMC2. There's no taunt button. So if there are no enemies around, your style rank just drops because there's nothing to hit to keep it up. Other Devil May Cry games and other character action games solve that problem by letting you taunt while there's nothing around while new waves of enemies spawn in so your rank doesn't drop. And we've reached the end of the mission. Uh, three elevator sections are basically what constituted that eight minute runtime of that mission. I imagine, like, at least three minutes of that was just being on an elevator with nothing else going on. Mission 8, the challenger shall rise while the king of AIDS. Well, well, what have we here? Do you have to ask? Hmm. Maybe another time. That is a Devil May Cry looking boss. Yuria Taurus. Angry Bull. Uh, also, Dante spoke! Holy shit! Did you catch that? Dante spoke a sentence or two. I wasn't paying that much attention. The amount of dialogue that Dante gets in this can be measured in like. in a couple of sentences, basically. Uh. Yeah, I'm getting hit a lot, sorry. I'm just kind of mashing my way through this one. Um, he's an okay design. Just a big, fiery, satanic-looking bull. Uh, the fight's not terribly interesting. It's a lot better than the Infested Chopper. Which I guess is kind of a poor standard? Uh, we can mess around with Fire Art and our Offense Heart, though. And our upgraded new sword. To really, really lay on the damage pretty thick, though. Oh, there was a green orb back in the corner. One of those breakable barrels gave it to us. Yeah, I'm just kind of mashing my way through here. I should be a little bit more careful at the very least. But the fight's already almost over. Uh, normal mode, probably a little bit too easy. I like what they did with uh, DMC 3 HD. <laughs> where uh, all of the modes in the North American version are just the harder, are, are just like one difficulty level up compared to uh, the Japanese version. Kind of like the opposite of European Extreme in Metal Gear. That's Furia Taurus. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, those 10,000 orbs give me enough to put Vendetta up to level 3 before we head into Mission 9. Not that there's anything that I really need to fight in Mission 9. As sad as that makes me to say. Uh, that should be the thing you look forward to the most in Devil May Cry. Is getting to fucking slash things with your sword. And style on enemies. The hunter will discover the purity of speed. That loading screen, uh, or the, the mission start splash screen... Makes you think that it's giving you a hint that you're really going to need the speed heart here. Uh, but you don't. Warning. Oh, I'm supposed to... Hit the button. Nah, I thought it was just going automatically. So that 12 minutes that we get 
to escape the, the exploding oil factory, refinery, whatever this place is, is, is kind of hilarious. Um, it might be... Of all the, the timed escape sequences in video game history, this might be one of the most silly. Uh, because you need nowhere near that amount of time. Not even a fraction of it. So I'm not exactly sure what happened to DMC2. Oh, that's not the right... That's I need to go through the door. Um, no, I have no idea what happened to DMC2. I'm really curious about it, too. Because it's directed by Itsuno, who is really, really genuinely talented. Uh, he did Power Stone, he did SNK2, he went on after this game to do Devil May Cry 3 and 4 and Dragon's Dogma. Itsuno is a seriously talented director and just developer in general. Uh, but he also did Devil May Cry 2, and I, I want to know how that happened. DMC2 is like the odd one out in that pedigree, and I don't get why it turned out so bad. The development had to be really weird for this. Um, as you know, Hideki Kamiya and his team, uh, the little Team Little Devils at Capcom, they directed the first game in the series, uh, but while Devil May Cry 1 was being localized, Capcom went and asked a different team headed by Itsuno to make the sequel. I asked Kamiya on Twitter why that was, because DMC 1 was received so well and it sold pretty well. Uh, and what he said was that Capcom wanted Mikami to ask him to work on a new title because Capcom really needed, at the t back at the time, uh, in the early 2000s, Capcom really needed a big first party title. So, my analysis of this, what I'm guessing is that title had to be Beautiful Joe, right? Because that's the only thing I can think of that fits. Kamiya directed Beautiful Joe, Mikami was the producer on Beautiful Joe, and Joe came out in 2003. So I guess Devil May Cry 2 went to Itsuno because Beautiful Joe is being made. Uh, but Kamiya was really bummed out about that. Because someone just walked up to him one day. Uh, and this, like, Devil May Cry 2 was started development while DMC1 was still in the process of being localized. Keep that in mind. Uh, someone walked up to Kamiya one day and they were like, Hey, can I have the design doc for DMC1? And Kamiya asked him why. And the guy who was asking him was Itsuno, and he said, because Capcom asked me to make DMC2. <laughs> I, it, it still doesn't explain why Devil May Cry 2 turned out so poorly. I would love to ask Itsuno about it one day. It's not as easy to jump on Twitter and ask him, because I don't think he speaks as much English as Kamiya. But I would just, I would love to pick his brain about the development of, of DMC2. The only thing I've ever heard him say about why this game turned out the way it was, and it wasn't even, like, directly answering that. Uh, God, what was it? It was, uh, someone from Engadget. Someone from, some guy from Engadget was interviewing him once, uh, before DMC4 came out. And the guy from Engadget was like, well, DMC2 sucked. What did you learn from it? And Itsuno just kind of dodged it and basically said, well, we learned that DMC3 would be a good foundation to have four built on. Beyond that, I, I can't even begin to figure out where they went so wrong here. I mean, I get there's going to be some growing pains when you just switch directors and teams, but again, Itsuno is so talented. And he's carried the series on to its best entries with three and four. So I don't, I, I, I just don't know. Uh, either way, I'm pretty sure we're just about, what the fuck? What was with the sliding against the wall when I entered the door? Yeah, we're just about done. We have a biplane here. Maybe it's a little, uh, send up to the plane from Devil May Cry 1. We just have to enter it. The plane starts moving on its own. I don't know why that is. Phantom biplane. Uh, but we come in here because we have to smash the crate. Or we don't have to. I don't think we have to. Uh, but if we do, we get the missile launcher. Very, very handy firearm. And the biplane moved forward on its own and crashed into the grate on the wall. So that we can escape through here. Somewhere. If I rub my face against this wall enough. Uh, and we've almost eight full minutes left on the clock.
And that is mission... What was that? That was mission 9. Mission 9 is out of the way. And that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.